And now we're going to begin our look at Chapter 7, Entering the World Stage. Our learning objectives are to explain how the U.S. began to engage in imperialist activities in Hawaii, China, and Japan. So starting in the late 1800s, Americans wanted the United States to become a world power. Many industrialized nations, including Great Britain, Belgium, France, Germany, Japan, and the United States were in competition and, uh, for economic and military resources. A sense of cultural superiority and a desire to spread the Christian faith also drove the conquest to obtain new lands. So one example of American imperialism ties into the country, or what at the time was the country of Hawaii, the islands of Hawaii. Rich American sugar planters owned large plantations in Hawaii, and they forced the king, Kalakua, to sign the Bannett Constitution, which transferred Pearl Harbor to the United States and reduced the king to just basically being a figurehead. When he died, his sister, Lilu Kalani, became queen, and she did begin to reassert some of her own authority. That didn't really fly with the American sugar planters, and what ends up happening is that the, um, the American minister to Hawaii ordered Marines that were stationed offshore to come ashore, and with their support, the queen was overthrown. Sanford B. Dole became the president of the Republic of Hawaii. So you, at the time, the U.S. president was Grover Cleveland, and Cleveland commissioned the Blount Report, which found that the overthrow of the queen was illegal. He ordered the reinstatement of the queen, but the provisional government refused. And this puts, uh, this puts Cleveland into a very awkward position, because his only real option is to use American military forces to go in and overthrow Americans who have seized this country, to reinstate the queen when they refused. Uh, he doesn't really feel he can do that, so ultimately he does nothing. Then in 1898, when uh, William McKinley was president, they annexed Hawaii, and it became the 50th state in 1959. In 1993, Congress issued an apology to the Hawaiian people. Back in 1895, Japan seized China's Leotung Peninsula and the island of Taiwan. Russia, France, Germany, and Great Britain carved out spheres of influence in China, and these were geographic areas where an outside nation had special political or economic influence. In 1899, the U.S. proposed the Open Door Policy, which would give all nations equal trading rights in China. Now, the idea here is that we really kind of were late to the party. Uh, other countries had already got in, and what happened is China at this point in time was basically being ruled by local warlords. And so these spheres of influence were places where, where different European countries had begun to work with local war, war, warlords and had been given exclusive trading rights in a certain region of China. But this open-door policy... Uh, the United States proposes it because we were basically shut out of China. Uh, ultimately, the, many European countries agree that this open-door policy is a good thing, and so this kind of opens up all of China to foreign trade. But many Chinese were unhappy with the foreign influence. And this leads to an uprising uh, that becomes known as the Boxer Rebellion, the society of righteous and harmonious fists. Uh, and these were, this was a group that practiced a martial art that um, involved striking. And the closest thing that most Americans could approximate to it at the time was boxing. And that's, that's why they kind of referred to them as the boxers. Uh, now, it's said that the boxers believed that they, their martial arts could protect them from bullets. Uh, sadly, that wasn't the case. Um, so they laid siege to the city of Beijing in the Boxer Rebellion, uh, also killed many Westerners, and Western nations put down the rebellion, and China was forced to sign a humiliating treaty. And now we'll look at 
U.S. influence in Japan. Now, as we talk about this, we really have to kind of go back in time uh, because this really started in the 1850s. In 1853, President Millard Fillmore sent Commodore Matthew Perry to Edu Bay, which is now what we know as Tokyo, and uh, he came with a fleet of big black ships and, and a letter from President Fillmore demanding that Japan open their ports to trade. Uh, ultimately, J Japan felt they had no choice, uh, so they opened their ports to trade, but soon after, Japan began to modernize. And then, after Japan modernized, Japan also began to kind of get in on the imperialism. And we already mentioned Japan uh, as competing for different interests in China. Japan and Russia fought for control of Korea and Manchuria in the Russo-Japanese War right around the turn of the century. And President Roosevelt helped to negotiate a peace treaty. With this victory, Japan became the dominant power in East Asia, and it rivaled the U.S. for influence in China and the Pacific. 